Hey friends, now we will discuss uh, briefly what is a source impedance. So let's go to our blackboard. Practically, uh, uh, actually in our calculations, we are using basically the source which has, you can say inside there is no impedance, zero impedance. So which is an ideal case, but practically each source, I am drawing a voltage source here also containing a resistance okay which is kind of connected in series okay and you can see we can draw it like uh, this is our power supply actually should be look like this for example this is one ohm an example okay and this is 10 volts so practically each source has its own impedance for example if we have a generator gener each generator has its resistance and also it has an inductance so each generator has two components whenever current will flow and generator supplies some some load the current will flow also through its own resistance or own impedance okay just for simplicity i have shown that resistance is connected in series with a generator so this is basically a voltage source example of voltage source so whenever this generator supply a current to a load for example here this is a load connected this is for example one ohm so whenever generator supply the load here the one is the internal resistance will come in series with the load resistance and here the current will be equal to as we know by ohms law 10 divided by 2 ohm because both are in series will be equal to 5 ampere okay so the resistance will equal to 5 ampere and here you can see there will be also a voltage drop across the generator internal impedance so if you multiply 1 by 5 it will be 5 volts so 5 volt we drop here internally okay at the generator and the source voltages are supplied at 10 volts but the voltage that will be receiving here will be 5 volts so 5 volts are dropping across the source itself and these 5 voltages are appearing to the load so this is an example of practical source so each source whenever it's supplying current it could be transformer generator or xyz there is current also flow through the uh, impedance or resistance of the source itself and there will be some voltage drops the terminal voltage of the generator will it mean always will be changing now if one ohm is connected the terminal voltage of the generator here are for example 5 volts because 5 volts are dropping across the generator itself now if we connect here the resistance of for example 9 ohms here if you connect 9 plus 1 10 so 1 ampere will flow here okay so now if we change the resistance one ampere will flow and voltage drop across this will be one into one ohm will be equal to only one volts so now in the new case after dropping one volt nine volt will appear across the generator terminal and this same nine volt will appear considering there is no loop resistance as superconductor so the same volt will appear across the load so 9 volt will appear here so in an ideal source there will no voltage drop across the generator it's winding itself or transformer in winding itself but practically there is no generator or the transformer which, which don't have the internal resistance so 
practically they will be always will be the voltage drop more is the resistance of the generator more will be the voltage drop if the load is increases load trend increases okay now in example now for example if we disconnect if we disconnect the load okay for example if we disconnect the load okay and we connect a voltmeter here across it if we connect a voltmeter across it if we connect no load if we connect a voltmeter the potential difference in the that case will equal to so when i is equal to 0 source voltage is vs is equal to complete 10 volts because there is no current there will be no voltage drop across the source in place itself the terminal voltage across the source will be equal to 10 volts and if we connect a load of we have seen 1 ampere the source voltage terminal voltage is equal to 5 volts in that case and if the current flow through it okay in this case current uh, if 1 ampere is flowing then the, uh, the source voltage will be equal to 9 volts so because 1 volt will drop across the internal resistance and 9 volt will appear across the source okay if for example in the other case if 5 ampere is flowing load current of 5 ampere is flowing then the source or the supply voltage or terminal voltage will be equal to 5 volts so in this case there is zero voltage drop across internal impedance of the transformer in second case then 1 volt will drop across the internal impedance of the transformer at 1 ampere and we get the terminal voltage or the source voltage as 9 volts if the load increases the internal voltage drop also increase and now then we get the source voltages of 5 volts here I can give another example for example if you take a battery dry cell which is if you connect this cell to a bulb the blurb will not lit up for example it's a dry cell and if you connect this dry cell to a bulb bulb is not switching on the rating of the dry cell is 1.5 volts okay so when you put it in in, in series this is uh, 1.5 volts it's not switching off but when you basically disconnect the load you can do this experiment with some old cells or used cells if you disconnect the load and connect a voltmeter here if you connect the voltmeter okay if you connect the voltmeter the voltmeter still shows one point for example 4 8 or 1.4 volts but if you connect the bulb the blood will not lit up 4.4.45 in the new cell if you connect a voltmeter it is also showing one point for example 5 volts and if you connect the bulb with the uh, dry cell it will switch on it will lit up what's the reason if you are getting voltages we are not able to switch on or the power of the bulb the reason is if a dry battery with the time the internal resistance of the dry battery is increasing as as this battery is losing its life its internal resistance is keep on increasing a time comes in, in uh, internal resistance is keep on increasing a time come that all the voltages are drop across the uh, this internal resistance and hardly any voltages are appearing 
across the load. So this is the reason that if you connect a voltmeter across that dry cell, you will get the voltage. But if you, if you basically connect a load, it doesn't work. So in production philosophy, a voltage which cannot drive the load, but you can still measure it, it called as a ghost voltages. So we are using this term in our production engineering more and more about the coarse voltages. So this is an example. In any voltage, if you measure, try to measure it for voltmeter, it will show something. But if you connect a load, it cannot drive. If you connect a bulb, it cannot lit up. The reason behind this is that internal impedance of that specific source is so high that it cannot do anything. So now let's consider another example of internal resistance. For example, this we have seen practically here that we are getting, we have seen that we are getting, we have a solid positive power supply and we have a solid negative power supply. Solid positive and solid negative. Okay. Now, at some time at some point if this solid positive is grounded okay uh, not solidly with with some impedance with some impedance means it's touching to the ground with some weak insulation not it's uh, connected directly to the ground for example insulation of one uh, you can say one mega ohms for example or one kilo ohms for example it is grounded at one kilo ohms now if I connect a voltmeter because voltmeter has a good even it's had higher mega ohms impedance of this is more for example it's impedance is 100 mega ohms it's very good quality so if I connect a voltmeter it across with the ground it will show me the voltages if for example these are 100 volts some voltage will be drop across this one mega ohm and some most of the voltage will drop across the mega ohms of the voltmeter so voltmeter will show the reading of kind of 99 volts for example but if I try to connect a bulb Okay, if I try to connect a bulb between this and uh, if I try to connect a bulb between negative, this is basically a ground, negative to ground because ground is showing positive supply, then this bulb will not lit up. This will not lit up, and reason is the bulb bulb resistance here is equal to, for example. 0.5 ohms and this is a high impedance fault so most of voltage is dropping here or even it's at 1 ohm and hardly 0.5 volts 0 0.0005 volts will appear across this because rest will drop across the huge impedance but if this conductor is solidly grounded it's not grounded through any impedance then full voltage will appear between ground because this is grounded and now if you connect a bulb here to the ground it will lit up because all the voltages 100 volt will appear across this bulb so I hope you understand the concept of ghost and rear voltages so in this case these, these are the same 99 volts here if you again connect a voltmeter in this case again you will get the 19 or 100 volts 100 complete volts but because this is ground through high impedance so the circuit will be kind of this this is high impedance and this is basically our impedance of our load which is equal to 1 ohm and this is 1 mega ohm for example or 1 kilo ohms so here the voltage that will appear across the bulb here equal to 1000 times the supply voltages which is equal to 100 
divided by 1000 which is equal to 0.1 volts so plug will not lit up so this was a concept of ghost voltages and this is and supply voltages i just uh, thought that this is really worth telling you so thank you very much we'll move to our next topic